Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. Nineteen seventy was a very important year in the automotive industry. This year, the revised Clean Air Act, known as the Muskie Act, was enacted in the United States. It was a very strict regulation that required the toxic components in the exhaust gases of cars produced after 1976 to be reduced to less than one tenth of those in the 1971 model. Since then, it can be said that engine development has been a challenge against exhaust emissions regulations. The following three substances are regulated by law. Hydrocarbons, which cause photochemical smog. Carbon monoxide, which causes poisoning symptoms. And nitrogen compounds, which contribute to photochemical smog and acid rain. First, we will learn how these substances are generated. The main components of the atmosphere are nitrogen and oxygen. Gasoline is injected into the intake air at the intake manifold. The main component of gasoline is hydrocarbons. The air fuel mixture compressed and ignited in the combustion chamber undergoes a chemical change through combustion. If the chemical reaction proceeds ideally, oxygen and hydrocarbons are converted into water and carbon dioxide. Therefore, the only non toxic substances emitted from the exhaust pipe water, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. However, in reality, it is not only this kind of ideal combustion that occurs. The gasoline and air are not uniformly mixed, and the temperature in the combustion chamber varies and becomes high. Unburned gasoline is emitted as hydrocarbons. Carbon from incomplete combustion is emitted as carbon monoxide, and nitrogen oxidized at high temperatures is emitted as nitrogen compounds. These toxic substances are released directly into the atmosphere. The three-way catalyst is used to purify these three toxic gases. It is installed in the exhaust pipe, and the inside is a honeycomb structure coated with precious metals, such as platinum, palladium, and rhodium. These precious metals promote chemical reactions, transforming the toxic substances in the exhaust gases into non-toxic substances. Hydrocarbons are broken down into carbon and hydrogen, then combined with oxygen, transforming into water and carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide combines with oxygen and transforms into carbon dioxide. After being deprived of oxygen, nitrogen compounds undergo a reaction where nitrogen atoms bond together to form nitrogen. For a three-way catalyst to function efficiently, certain conditions of temperature and air-fuel ratio must be met. This graph shows the air-fuel ratio of the mixture combusted in the engine and the conversion ratio of the three-way catalyst. The air-fuel ratio value represents the weight ratio of gasoline to air. When the weight of air is 14.7 and gasoline is 1, all the gasoline can combust completely without any excess or deficiency of oxygen. This air-fuel ratio of 14.7 is called the stoichiometric air-fuel ratio. When the air-fuel ratio is lean, meaning the amount of gasoline is low relative to the amount of air, hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide are converted at a high rate. However, the conversion rate of nitrogen compounds is low. When the air-fuel ratio is rich, meaning there is more gasoline relative to the amount of air, nitrogen compounds are converted at a high rate. However, the conversion rates of hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide are low. To convert all three substances with high efficiency, the air-fuel ratio must be maintained near the stoichiometric ratio. To achieve this, an O2 sensor is installed at the inlet of the three-way catalyst to continuously monitor the residual oxygen concentration in the exhaust gases. The engine control unit adjusts the fuel injection amount to maintain the air-fuel ratio near the stoichiometric ratio based on the signal from the O2 sensor. The O2 sensor generates a voltage based on the difference in oxygen concentrations between the exhaust gases in the atmosphere, but it can only determine whether the air-fuel ratio is rich or lean. With the tightening of exhaust gas regulations, 
more advanced control became necessary, leading to the use of air-fuel ratio sensors with the linear output characteristic in relation to the oxygen concentration ratio. In modern engines, an air-fuel ratio sensor is installed upstream of the three-way catalytic converter for precise air-fuel ratio control, and an O2 sensor is installed downstream to monitor the degradation of catalytic converter performance. Three-way catalytic converters require a temperature of at least 350 degrees Celsius to achieve its designated performance. Until the 2000s, exhaust gas regulations did not require emissions performance during cold starts. Since there was no need to consider warming up the catalytic converter, it was installed under the floor, away from the engine. However, when emissions regulations began to cover cold start conditions as well, it became necessary to warm up the catalytic converter quickly. As a result, it started being installed directly below the exhaust manifold. In recent years, carbon dioxide has been identified as a cause of global warming, and a reduction in carbon dioxide emissions has also been demanded for automobile engines. As long as gasoline is burned with oxygen, carbon dioxide will inevitably be produced. Therefore, the only way to reduce carbon dioxide is to decrease the amount of gasoline burned. In other words, to improve fuel efficiency. One method for achieving this is lean burn. It is a technology that operates the engine with a smaller amount of gasoline, meaning a lean air-fuel ratio, primarily during light load conditions, with small throttle valve opening. However, there is a problem. As mentioned earlier, the three-way catalyst cannot purify nitrogen compounds when the air-fuel ratio is lean. Therefore, in lean burn engines, a NOx storage reduction catalyst is used, in addition to the three-way catalyst. During lean burn operation, nitrogen compounds are stored in the catalyst. To reduce nitrogen compounds in the catalyst, the engine control unit enriches the air-fuel ratio during normal operation to supply excess hydrocarbons to the catalyst. The nitrogen compounds and hydrocarbons react, transforming into harmless water, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide, which are then released into the atmosphere. Gasoline particulate is an extremely fine particle formed by the solidification of unburned hydrocarbons. In gasoline direct injection engines and hybrid vehicles that often operate in cold conditions, a significant amount of gasoline particulates are generated. Therefore, these vehicles are equipped with a gasoline particulate filter to remove them. Particulate matter is captured by the filter. When the exhaust gas temperature rises, such as during high load operation, the particles collected in the filter are burned away. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.